Hey, hey, YouTube friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is LaDonna. I'm a homeschooling mom of two. And on my channel, I just like to share what we're learning, how we're growing, and what God is doing in our lives. Okay, so for those of you who are new, um, before I jump into uh, what this video is about, I want you to know this is our third year of homeschooling. We have been homeschooling since the pandemic and we love it. God has used homeschooling to do some amazing things within our family and as of right now, we still feel called to be on this journey of homeschooling. Okay, now that I have that out of the way, I'm ready to share with you what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Today, I want to talk with you about my fifth graders math. Um, again, for those of you who are new, my daughter is a fifth grader this homeschool year, the 2022-2023 homeschool year. And this year we are using the Simply Good and Beautiful Math 5. This is the course book right here. I also have um, the mental math book uh, and the uh, answer key. So all three of these books come together if you purchase them from the Good and Beautiful Homeschool Curriculum company. Now I have a little sheet here. This is kind of what I've been looking at and piddling with. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that when I edit this video. Uh, but I have gotten quite a few questions because in the past for our core math curriculum, since we've been homeschooling, we have been using teaching textbooks. And the reason why we um, switched our girl this year to the Simply Good and Beautiful Math 5 is because we wanted to bring her back to pencil and paper. We love teaching textbooks. Teaching textbooks is still a part of our homeschool, but it has taken more of a supplemental role within our homeschool. Now, um, my purpose for today's video is to answer some of the questions that I have been asked since sharing this curriculum pick. And also, I just wanted to create a helpful video. When I started looking to YouTube for information about um, the Simply Good and Beautiful's new math course, I did find some helpful videos, but because this course is so new, for those of you who don't know, but I'm sure everybody knows, um, the Simply Good and Beautiful math is their revised math that they have just recently released. Um, I found some helpful videos, but I wish that there would have been more videos that were focused on content and layout rather than review. There are a lot of review videos out there, but it's just all basic review. Those are very, very helpful, um, but for a new homeschooler, which I still consider ourselves new homeschoolers, uh, and also for a family that was transitioning from online math to paper and pencil, there were just a few questions that I had. Now, obviously I did more homework. Uh, I didn't stay on YouTube. Um, I went to the Good and the Beautiful's website. I read blogs. I read everything that I could get my hands on and I still feel like we made the best decision. However, there are some things um, that I wish I would have known beforehand. Now, had I had known these things before purchasing, I still don't think it would have changed my mind. However, I do think I would have been able to approach the curriculum a little differently. Um, and what I mean by that is I could have helped my daughter a little bit more in the beginning. I don't know if that's resonating with anybody, but again, we don't work for the curriculum. The curriculum works for us and we tailor things that we need to tailor. So now that I have said that, that's what this video is about. Now, before I get into what I have written on this paper, front and back, um, I want to share with you, for those of you who are wondering, well, LaDonna, what other math curriculums have you used other than teaching textbooks? Well, we have used quite a few. Now, what I'm about to share with you are curriculums that we have used not as the spine um, of our math curriculum, but rather as supplements. And those include Horizons, um, CLE, the Christian Light Education Publications, we've used those specifically two and four. And then Horizon, we've used Horizon 2, uh, BJU, and Masterbooks, Lessons for a Living Education. So I feel like for the most part, we've had a, um, a good general view of different math curriculums. And now I can say uh, the Simply Good and Beautiful Math 
uh, along with teaching textbooks. Um, so anyway, I hope that that helps you and gives you an idea of where we are coming from and what our background is. I've also used a variety, a variety of different uh, workbooks when it comes to math. We do tend to be a little classical when it comes to math because math is math and it doesn't matter which way you cut it, it is still math. So I hope that that is helpful to you. Before I get into this, there are some things I want to share with you that you yourself would find if you go on the um, Good and Beautiful's website, the Simply Good and Beautiful website about their math course, or if you do any other researching. There is some information on their website that you can read about the math courses before you um, purchase them or download them. Okay, number one, uh, the Simply Good and Beautiful math is open and go. Now, what you have to understand is that the Simply Good and Beautiful math is revised. So they they revise the whole course. Um, if you do further reading or if you watch um, the video that they have available, they break the Simply Good and Beautiful math courses into two groups. So the first group is K math all the way up to third grade math. And then you have fourth grade math all the way up to sixth grade math. So those are the two courses. Um, the first courses are advertised as parent-led and um, they also advertise that these lessons are short. Now, obviously when you are working with kindergartners, first graders, second graders, third graders, um, that math is not something that they can do independently. Uh, they are going to need instruction. But again, they do advertise that the lessons are short and fun and there are manipulatives and games um, and all of the things that just help make math fun uh, for the younger ages. The second group, fourth grade math, fifth grade math, and sixth grade math, it is advertised as student-led. Now there are video lessons provided for fourth, fifth, and sixth grade math, and these videos are used to introduce the concept. Now for each lesson in the course book right here, there is a a, a written lesson. Um, the idea is students are to refer to the written lesson after they've watched the video lesson if they need more help. Um, but on the Good and Beautiful website and in their YouTube video, they state that if the student uh, prefers, they can just read um, the lesson instead of watching the video lesson. So again, it's advertised as student-led and there are videos that introduce the concept. If you do further reading on their website, it does state that all of the courses are academically strong and they are above national standards. Now, I do feel like since COVID, that has a totally different meaning when it comes to national standards because of what we are seeing now that we are on the other side of COVID and all of these new studies. So I'm really not too sure um, what kind of weight that holds, but it is stated there. Now, when it comes to um, the strength of the math academically. Yes, I do agree that it is academically strong uh, and it is comparable to other academically strong curriculums in the homeschool world. The website also states that there is a lot of practice built in. Yes, there is a lot of practice built in. The idea for uh, that second group, which is math four, five, and six, again, they watch the video and they practice and practice and practice and practice um, until the student has mastered the lesson. The website also states that this course is spiral, and yes it is, there is review built in um, to each lesson, but what I find really interesting is that the review lessons don't just spiral the concepts that the child is learning in the particular course that they're working on. Um, the spiral includes concepts that have been taught in previous courses. So I think that that is very, very important for the homeschooled teacher to keep in mind, right? Now, we haven't ran into anything yet um, that has caused us to scratch our head, but the further I dug into this, I did make that discovery. Now, I do think that that is a fantastic component for students who start with uh, the K level and go all the way through. However, for those of us who kind of come in from other curriculums, I can see how it can create a problem. 
depending on the level and um, the math background of the student. So I think it's very important for the homeschool uh, teacher and parent to keep in mind. Now something else that's very important for the homeschool family to keep in mind, as stated in their YouTube video, as video lessons progress, students should be able to gain independence by being able to go from the course becoming parent-led to student-led. Now, if you go on their website and you look at Math 4, 5, and 6, it does say student-led, but in their video, it states that as the students go throughout the courses, they should gain independence. So what does that mean? Again, all of these courses are building off of one another. So that first group, the K through 3, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever the homeschool teacher is, has been leading these math lessons. Then in grade four, the video lessons are introduced and the student is learning how to become more independent so that when they step out into fifth grade and sixth grade and so on, they are completely independent. Now, that information is really what inspired this video because this is my daughter's course book and I can tell you that even though on the website it says that it is student-led, um, this this math course in our home is not student-led. Um, my daughter very much still uh, needs me. Um, and as of right now, my husband, my husband has stepped in to be the math teacher and it has been a fantastic thing, but this is not um, student-led. Now, I do not think that that is a bad thing. However, going into it, I went into it with the idea that this would be student-led. But again, we came in from um, teaching textbooks and other math curriculums, and we also entered into a math curriculum that is academically strong. So for my daughter, for my girl, it is not student-led. Uh, it is still parent-led, meaning she watches the video, we watch the video with her, we do use um, the written lesson to reinforce what she has learned, and we are beside her as she goes through the practices. Now, like I said, there is a ton of practice. Just to give you an example, let me see, I'm gonna show you one um, that doesn't have that she hasn't worked on. Okay, so this is lesson 86. You can see right here on the front, um, this is where they would scan the code to watch the video and do the practice, and then right next to it where it says mini lessons, actually the lesson written out. So that's what they are supposed to be referring to if they need help. Now on this page, this is all of um, the practice. That's all of the practice. And then when you flip the page over, you still have more practice on one side of the page, and then this green uh, highlighted box is all of the review. So there is a ton of practice in here. If practice is what you're worried about, I can assure you they are gonna get a lot of practice in here. Um, now, I don't make my girl do all the practice. I feel like we've taken on a Saxton approach, and I'm just kind of going in there and highlighting the ones I want her to do, whether it's all the even or all the odd, because there's a ton of practice. Now when it comes to the review, the built-in review that is uh, a spiral review, I really do enjoy that. We are currently, let's see where we are, so you can have an idea. She finished up lesson 18 today. Um, so what we have been doing, she has been doing three to four lessons out of this course book a week, and then for the rest of the week, whether it's uh, for two lessons or one lessons, she will do teaching textbooks. What I have seen so far um, from this course book, as you can see here, I have it highlighted. Um, the concepts that are introduced, uh, what you will have, you will have um, 
a week or a couple of days where the concepts are gentle and then you will have a couple of days where the concepts get really complicated and then after a couple of days of those types of concepts it'll go back to a gentler concept so what I have tried to do is I have tried to keep the concepts that build off of one another together uh, so for example um, when we were working on um, prime factorizations and exponents and multiplying and multiplying and dividing by powers of 10 I kept all of those together I let her take a break and then she worked on teaching textbooks for a couple of lessons um, and then the next lessons that we came back to were single double and triple line graphs bar graphs double bar graphs uh, and then fractions and percents so I just kept all of those together and once she completed those we um, took a break and we went to teaching textbooks and this method uh, seems to be working really well for us but I want you to keep that in mind Mind. Um, the concepts do build but you do have some gentler concepts introduced and then you also have some more complicated concepts introduced something else that really stands out to me um, and that I think that they could revise is this mental math uh, we tried to do this and it just didn't work for us um, and what I mean is my daughter could do it but this was just becoming more of a strain. So I feel like that this would be better advertised as an optional element. Um, I do not think uh, if you choose not to do the mental math, it hinders the course at all. I think if you have a child who excels at math um, and who finds math enjoyable, then yes, by all means add this. This would be a great way um, to take the course to the next level, but I do not think it is a necessary element uh, because of the frustration it created for us and I actually just put it away we are not utilizing it at all and again it is not hindered the course for us in one bit something else I've noticed within this course book because of the other math curriculums that we have done sometimes the directions are not as specific as they can be now there are directions given in the practice practice part of the courses um, but sometimes I feel like they're a little vague uh, and I just don't know if that's very helpful for children now not all of the directions are like that um, but there have been a few directions where I feel like they could have uh, you know given a little bit more I feel like some children are very literal and you have to tell them okay turn left here something to that extent and when it comes to directions in written form I think the more information the better some of the directions can be a little lacking so you have to be paying um, specific attention to what it is that you're working on because there were a few times I found myself rereading them and I thought you know that could have been elaborated on a little bit more so uh, just keep that in mind also the video lessons um, we are enjoying the video lessons I like that they're short uh, I do think that the concept is communicated and taught very very clearly um, but what I am seeing is that the concept is taught in multiple ways and it also shows the child that there's more than one way to come to an answer however there have been a few lessons where we've had to just kind of say okay this is the way that you need to do it this is going to better serve you in your math journey okay friends so those are just some of my thoughts on my daughter's math course like I mentioned earlier when I was looking for um, videos out there I didn't really find videos like this so my heart here is to help you uh, we are still going through this course we are still enjoying this course like I said now that we have been able to tailor it to my daughter's needs it is working for us I do think what is being taught in math five is appropriate there have already been a few concepts that I can remember learning in the fifth grade um, but we are taking it at our pace and we are using the resources that we need to help us 
And like I said earlier, the biggest adjustment is this is not a student-led course. This um, has become parent-led. And once we made the adjustments that we needed to make and once we uh, approached the course like that, it is serving us so much better. So anyway, friends, okay, this video is way too long and I'm gonna have to edit it. I hope that this video was helpful to you. I hope it served you. Um, please let me know below in the comments if you are you using Simply Good and Beautiful Math. Um, please let me know if you have had to make some adjustments. Please ask me any questions. I will try my best to answer them. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time. Bye.